with, with bands, especially punk rock bands, that when you're at a certain point and you've got your core fans, and then something happens like they play your video on MTV or you start selling records, do you find that a lot of the original fans get pissed off? Well, not too much in our case because I think people who come out to see us really love us. I mean, the crowds have been getting bigger and, and everybody seems to like know the words and stuff like that. I don't think we're really hated at all. I mean, I think we're more loved. But it seems yeah. like some of the new bands, I know like certain people get pissed off like, oh, I mean, the object, which I don't think people understand, is you do want to get a bigger and bigger fan base, right? Well, Still keeping true to yourself, but... Well, I guess in a way, I mean, punk rock, to me personally, is always about making a better life for yourself. And, you know, if you can do that without stepping on anybody's toes, and that's what it's about, you know. Because, you know, I, I didn't go to college, you know, I don't have a, you know, I dropped out of high school, you know. I'm fortunate to be, you know, playing music and doing what I'm doing. So, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, for every group of, like, five kids at a show that will yell sell out at you, there's another 2,000 kids that right. love your music. So it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, they're those kids that don't like you because you're on a certain label after a num certain number of years or you're so big. It's like those people never really liked you in the first place. Mm -hmm. right. They're just out there to, to you know, the way I look at it is somebody told them about the band and they got into it and this is just happening more and more friends are going, hey, I like Grants and well, I like Grants and so more people just turn it on to more friends, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, I think some that's the way punk rock works. I mean, when I was a kid and growing up and feeling like I was the only one that felt, had all these feelings, I mean, I was more worried at 11 years old who was in office than worrying about Matchbox cars, you know, or something like that. And I mean, I was listening to records like the Subhumans or Discharge or GBH or whoever I could get a, uh, a hold of, and they, they were saying something that I felt. Now, if it still holds true, which I think it does, and if some kid in you know the middle of Nebraska or something gets a hold of a Rancid record or a Green Day record or an Offspring record or whatever it is, and gets something from it, that's what it's all about, you know? I mean, it, I don't know, it's not an ego thing, it's just like, you know, putting back what you got out of it. We're gonna come back and talk to Rancid and we're gonna play a video from Rancid. Stay tuned, we got more Headbangers Ball. Get on the ball we're gonna play a video from them in just a little bit. But before we do, with the success recently of bands like Green Day and Offspring, even though the music really never went away, does it seem like all of a sudden that the labels, instead of looking for the next grunge band, are now looking for the next punk rock band? Well, I mean, it's with everything that's good, people are gonna just like, you know, try to snatch up. It's about time. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, like you said, I mean, punk rock has been there for 20 years. Um, if you keep, you know, it's just, it's always going to be there. I mean, right now, there's the 16-year-old kid in his garage banging it out. He's going to probably, you know, carry on the next wave of it. Who, you know, after Rancid and Offspring Green Day are long gone, it's still going to go. You know, and that's the wonderful thing about punk rock. I mean, it's stood the test of time. So, I mean, it's just, just, just what's happening now. It doesn't really And the other that. thing that with you guys, I mean, putting a label on a type of music, I mean, you guys just got on, went on tour with Sick of It All, and so a lot of their fans that hadn't seen you for the first time, there's a lot of people that watch The Ball that had heard of Rancid that are now good. I mean, you guys are appearing to just like, I just like saying people that like loud music. Yeah. yeah. I mean, our music is for everybody. You know, we don't want to, like, hold ourselves back and, like, restrict ourselves to a certain group of people that want to, you know, enjoy us. It's like, we're out there to make music and have fun, and if everybody else wants to enjoy it, that's fine, whether it be some jock Nimrod or, you know, the punk rock kid, you know. Now, we're going to play a video from uh, Rancid, and before we play the video, a lot of bands don't have much say in their videos, but you guys do, because yeah. who directs the videos? Well, Tim Armstrong, the guitar player, um, uh, and actually Matt Freeman, our bass player, produced Nihilism, too, you know, so we all, everybody's got their hands in it, but... Tim, you know, he's got, he gets visions and whatever, and he wants to do it the way he wants to do it, and it comes across that way, you know, I mean, that's the coolest part about it all, you know, he's very talented. I mean, the guy never went to music, or uh, video, or film school or whatever, you know, he just... His knows what looks just, good, so yeah, put it on. And he, well, he's just got, he's got an eye for things, and he's very talented, you know, and he went out and did the research and learned about how to do it, and he's doing a wonderful job. Let's play the video right now, this is Salvation from Rancid. <laughs> <laughs> 